Hey everybody, guess what? We're now live, not on the radio, but just on Facebook and on Periscope and YouTube as well. And TikTok? No. No. <laughs> no TikTok. Not today, Doc. No TikTok, no Doc. No dancing in the TikTok. No, no, none of that. Okay, so this is uh, the preamble before we catch up with the radio stations. And if you're watching us on Facebook, thank you very much. Tell your friends, share if you care. And when we get onto the radio, we will then plug the Facebook people. So treat them nicely in the chats. You know who you are. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's pretty loyal listener. Gotta love him. Yes, I wonder if Norman will check in today as well. We shall see. Yes, Norman, Storman, Norman from Massachusetts. All right, so let's make sure that we are live on the dealio. And then we are about a minute and change away from going live over here. Okay, and then I'm going to pop over to the text line. So we're going to talk. It's Melissa, by the way. I'm invisible. Um, you are right now. I am invisible. I am. Oh, without Lizzie here. That, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's, she's the one that flips things back and forth. Got <laughs> it. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So we got a minute to go. Now, let's look at the chat, see who anybody here. Let's say hello to you all. All right. There we go. I'm going to give you a link so that you can actually share the proper video. This watch party stuff is ridiculous and useless, and all it does is split the ticket and confuse everybody. And people make comments and such, and it just doesn't work. Well, no, and you're supposed to be socially distanced. And electronically, that is not social distancing. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> so wouldn't you know? You can't exchange electrons because you just might catch a computer virus. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. 22 seconds. Going to turn the uh, other deal up here. Now, teacher. Is it that time? It is time for Stages of Life, a weekly guide to a healthier you. Oh, that is Dr. David Klein. I am Melissa Fox from Good Morning Orlando and hosting the uh, the rest of the afternoon here on News Radio WFLA Orlando. Get your fingers ready. 407-422-1212. That's the number to check in. And if you want to just text your questions, thoughts, or otherwise, the text line's 23680. So what's on your mind today, Dr. Klein? Well, we're looking at a brand new audience. You know, this is really only our third week on uh, FLA. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if you're, if you're listening to a rebroadcast of this for whatever reason, it's, it's a rebroadcast. But if you're listening live, we are here in happy Longwood, Florida. And what we're going to do today is we're going to discuss what the Stages of Life Medical Institute, that's my, uh, my office, all 23 of us sitting in that 13,500 square foot office in Longwood, what our approach is, what our philosophy might be, and what we do for our patients, some of which is very familiar. It looks like a regular medical office, except it's loaded with art, okay? It looks like a regular medical office, except that we don't run around with white uh, coats, very few stethoscopes. We do very, very basic, very mainstream medicine with a very interesting approach to it. And the approach is different. You know, what we do is we look at people as individuals, and doctors are supposed to do that, but, you know, that kind of time has come and gone. More and more physicians look at things more and more narrowly. You know, if you've got a cataract, you go see the cataract doc. In fact, if you have a retinal issue, you see somebody else, because it's not enough to be an ophthalmologist. You have to be a retinologist. So if you're going to go see somebody for your diabetes, you go see a diabetologist. If you've got this, you got that. You're seeing people that really see diseases instead of seeing you. Now, I've got five board certifications. That kind of makes me what's known as a super specialist. And yet, what I really prefer to do is to become a generalist. It's kind of a throwback. You know, this is what, you're, this is what I was originally trained to do. I started off as a family doc, went into general surgery, went from here to there, bounced around getting pieces of paper out of the, the equation, and finally turned straight around and became a generalist. So the approach is kind of interesting. So when we see people, when they come in, I like to get a fresh look at folks. I, I like to see their records. I like to see the lab work that was done. I like to see the radiology stuff, but only after I've seen the patient and formulated my own opinion. Why do you suppose that is? And it's very simple. I don't want to be polluted by somebody else's error. And 
by the time people come to me, they've already seen 5, 10, 15, 20 other physicians and they can't figure out what's wrong. So why in the world do I, why should I care what other people are thinking? Now, this doesn't make a lot of friends for me, I got to tell you. You know, it's kind of like, you know, what am I doing? I specialize in misdiagnosis, other people's misdiagnosis. So the first thing we do, our first mission at Stages of Life, now it's not Dr. Klein's clinic, it's Stages of Life Medical Institute, our first mission is to figure out what's wrong, establish a precise diagnosis as to what's going on. And this would seem to be self-evident, and yet it really isn't. You can go bouncing around, gee, I've got chest pain, and you're going to see 15 doctors before they come back and tell you, oh, well, gee, we think it might be X, Y, and Z, but we're really not sure. Let's just keep an eye on it, and here's $1,000 a month worth of medication just in case. That's not the way we operate. The trick is, is to look under every, every not every conceivable stone, but every reasonable stone until you figure out what's wrong. So there are many diseases that are out there that come in, many people come in with these diseases or conditions that have no known cause. My favorite of which is fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is pain of fibromuscular origin with no known cause, which tells me that somebody didn't look very hard. So are there causes, known causes of fibromyalgia? And the answer is many. Everything from too little calcium, too much calcium, too little magnesium, too much magnesium. Easy. Hypothyroidism, hypoadrenalism. It gets a little bit tougher. There are many vitamin deficiency states that will make you ache all over. And then there are things like influenza that, that'll do it. Trichinella. I have seen some very, very strange things causing fibromyalgia, my most favorite of which is hyperparathyroidism. So we check every person that comes through the front door over the age of 30 for parathyroid disease. And we pick up two to three parathyroid adenoma patients per month. And this is supposed to be a rare disease. If you look at the NIH's group on rare diseases, you'll see it listed in there. It's only rare if you don't look. And that's true of everything. If you don't look, you will not find. If you keep an open mind, you will, you will learn things. So a prepared mind. Is, is really what we offer. We offer the ability to look at things without really being distracted very much. And we do it with a light heart. We do it uh, with, a, with some alacrity, some affability. We don't make you wait six weeks to come in. We work hard. We start early and stay late. That is actually our motto, all right? And so if somebody has to, if somebody has to wait, it's because of them, not because of us. Because we will work you in that week unless I'm out of town. If I'm out of town, I'm taking a rare vacation, okay? But short of that, is tomorrow fast enough? The day after that? So generally speaking, when people have to wait to come in, it's because of their own delays, not because of ours. So first thing that we do is we look at diagnosis, and it's done largely through electrodiagnosis and through blood work. Now, these are not um, holistic, you know, hold the bottle over your chest, wave your hand, and, 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 and say the following six words and see if your arm gets weak. No, we don't do any of this. This is very, very objective, very reproducible, and it's done with a, a federally licensed, highly complex laboratory, which I happen to run. Why? Okay, why would I, why would I ask for, for more aggravations? So can I got to tell you, most everybody's getting out of this business, and I'm getting into it, because it gives me the most precise, the absolutely most precise diagnosis you can get. And I want you to imagine this for a second, okay? And, I, and I'm sure that there are at least... I don't know, two or 3,000 people listening right now that are going to experience this. They go to the doctor's office. They get evaluated. They get their blood drawn. It's almost always the same thing anyway. Okay, and if you look for the same thing over and over again, not find it, you're, not gonna, you're just not going to discover anything, I've got to tell you. But just the same, they go through the motions. Where does that blood go? It sits in a box outside the doctor's office on a little metal hanger, okay? And it sits out there until 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night when the courier comes by to pick it up. Now, there's a, a problem with that, okay? It may sit out there for 6, 7, 8 hours, and it gets hot. Here in Florida, it gets to be 140 degrees inside that box. If you're up north, it might only get to be 100 degrees. But what happens is the blood spoils. Now, I want you to imagine that you're going to take a test tube full of milk and put it out there, send it off to Tampa, send it to St. Louis, send it to San Francisco, and then drink it on the other end. And I want you to, to tell me that it's gonna taste right. Could it be, what happens if it were a beer or a wine and you did the same thing? They spoil, these, these, these liquids are not as complicated as blood. And yet we treat it very, very badly and you end up with something called sampling error. 
the most common of which is you see liver enzymes, okay? And liver enzymes go wonky because all it takes is a little bit of disturbance and they, they, they'll shoot up unnecessarily. So there are people out there that get evaluated for liver disease, liver biopsies, li all kinds of crazy stuff because of the way the sample was handled. So what we do is we take it and we walk it 30 to 60 feet, okay, down the hallway to my laboratory. It's spun, frozen, or run immediately. That's the way it works. So it's, there's no sampling error. You don't end up with a problems of handling. You don't see our technicians taking these tubes and shaking them. When you take a blood tube and shake it, ta -ta 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 -ta, okay, what will happen is the blood lyses. The little red cells, they open up, and the chemicals inside the blood cells end up going into the serum, and it throws it off. The enzymes that you're looking at, the, they'll, go, they'll go up, down, sideways. It's very, very interesting. But there are other things that will happen. Things degrade. So I was an analytical chemist before I was a doctor. That was my, that was my first career choice after musician, which I, I was not a good musician. I was a professional, but not really world class. So I went back to school and became a chemist. I was pretty good at it, okay? And we learned something about the standard error of the estimate. And that's, that's a, a statistical tool that we use to tell people, tell ourselves, tell whomever, that the real value is within a particular range. So it might be 16 plus or minus two. What's this all about? You would think that, that, that all numbers are absolute. Well, they're not. Measurements have this particular variability. And when you're taking blood and shipping it, the standard error, the estimate, doubles. It's very, very interesting how this works. What do you do about uh, autoantibodies? They will degrade. As a chemist, I learned something interesting. As an undergraduate, we did a little, a little laboratory experiment. And we took orange juice and assayed the amount of vitamin C in it. Vitamin C, ascorbic acid, it's a pretty basic chemical. Nothing strange about vitamin C. Nothing complicated about the structure of vitamin C. It's not a big molecule. It's a small molecule. And we assayed it in analytical chemistry lab, quantitative analysis. And we found that at room temperature, it degraded by 50% each and every 45 minutes. Think about that for a second. Vitamin C levels you know, in orange juice will drop 50% every 45 minutes. Huh. What do you suspect? Okay, so a complex mixture like blood is going to do if it's allowed to sit at room temperature or hotter for as much as two to three days. You are going to end up with garbage results. So why did I do it? And the answer is very simple. It's Dexter's lab. If you've got any kids, you'll understand what that means. Dexter. It's a cartoon. Any, any uh, millennial children. You millennial children, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not, millennials don't listen to this. They're, they're out there playing video games. Mm -hmm. But for those of you that didn't endure... Uh, Dexter's lab. My daughter's now 30 years old. I had to endure uh, this <laughs> substantially. There's a cartoon character that had the most marvelous laboratory, and that's the way I see my life. And so, you know, we're always buying new and improved gadgets, new and improved analytical devices. We just uh, installed um, a, a, this huge, marvelous, automated robotic um, machine that will chunk out like lab sample after sample, lab sample. Bam, 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 bam. So what are we doing now at stages of life? What's our most recent research project? And it's called quantitative analysis of COVID-19 antibody levels. You're going to go, what the heck is he talking about? When we tell people that you're antibody positive, okay, IgM, it means you're infectious. IgG means you might not be, but we don't tell people just how likely are they to be uh, to have an immunity for when it comes back. Well, as an analytical chemist, you know, this is, this is fun to me. So I managed to get in the back door of the darn machines to get the quantitative values out of these things and then validate them, which is a fun thing to do, so we can actually assign numbers to these. So if somebody comes in, they're IgG positive, it's one thing to have a level of four. It's something else to have a level of 40. We can tell people whether the disease is getting better because the IgG titer is going up whether they're resolving because it's dropping down or whether they have relative immunity. Now this is important for planning. What happens if you're a teacher? Okay, and little Johnny gets sick. Don't you think it'd be nice to know that little Johnny isn't infectious anymore because his IgG level went up to 30? And more so, the, that his parents might want to know that he's not likely to pick it up again in the fall or again in the spring. 
That is wickedly cool. So that's a little ditty that we started doing at, at stages last week. We're looking at quantitative PCR. Why? Okay, because if somebody comes in and they're PCR positive, how do you know that you can get back to work? We tell people, well, you know, you need to be checked in a week. If you listen to the CDC, they say every three days until you're negative twice. At 100 bucks a pop, okay, that's a lot of money to this country, Doc. So I'm not really interested in watching people spend that kind of cash. I would far rather than they, that they take their kids out for pizzas. Not really. But the way that you figure out whether or not somebody is, is, more, is, is getting better or not is looking at the PCR viral load. Then you can see whether they're getting better. That is a pretty good summary of our most recent stuff that we're doing at, at, at stages. Nobody else is doing it. If you want to go get your lab work done at, at, at uh, the big box, I can't really say who they are because I'm afraid that they might get mad at me, <laughs> okay, then you're not going to get that data because they're not really going to give it. And they don't even really care. to. If you call them on the phone and ask them what it means, there's nobody to answer your phone call. They tell you, well, you need to talk to your doctor. Great, okay? So ask your doctor what that means, okay? Along with the laboratory, they get me. So, and they, eh, so what is stages of life? You know, we have our own diagnostic ultrasound in there, so if we need something quickly, we do it right then. You come in with, with pain in your, in your right upper quadrant, that means over the liver, we'll do an ultrasound right there. We don't have to send you to the hospital to go, gee, let's get a gallbladder ultrasound. We'll know very, very quickly. This is just the sort of thing that we do. Thyroid ultrasounds we do all day long, looking for parathyroid adenomas all day long, looking for cancers all day long. How do you make the diagnosis of mumps? Which, by the way, if you're listening in right now and you're over the age of 30, go out and get yourself a booster. They call them DTAPs, which we used to call uh, DPTs. That, you know, they, but you need a, a pertussis tetanus a diphtheria injection every 10 years. You can still get mumps as an adult. All right? Why is this a big deal? Okay, Because if you're 30 years old, 40 years old, it'll sterilize you if you're a guy. Kind of a, a, for some people, it's probably not a bad idea. But for most everybody else that's concerned about procreation, it doesn't work so well. With an ultrasound, you can actually scope out the, the parotids and see whether or not somebody has uh, mumps. It's very, very cool. You don't have to wait around for a titer. It doesn't cost as much to do the ultrasound. So at stages of life, what do we do? It's good old-fashioned medicine done completely and done on location. Question, okay, what insurances do we take? And the answer is very few. We take Medicare, we take a good number, but not all Medicare Advantage plans. In my world, there is no, no advantage to Medicare Advantage plans. What they do is they take from you and stick it in their pockets. If that works for you, good. Doesn't work for me. I'm of Medicare age, I pay for it. Why? Because I want the freedom to choose whatever doctor I want, not some unpronounceable individual in a catalog who may or may not be um, board eligible, frankly. It's, these are the low bid folks. So Medicare, some Advantage plans. We take TRICARE. Interestingly, I was a vet, so I take TRICARE. We're trying to get right now onto the VA program, which you would think it'd be easy because they're looking for docs. Good luck. Okay, it's just impossible to deal with the federal government. We used to take Blue Cross, but we help you submit them. So we, you know, we discount things for folks that don't have insurances that we take. And we're going to take a little break. Then we've got some callers. And so far... So good. You're listening to Stages of Life Radio on News Radio WFLA Orlando. Is unique. Unlike your average pharmacy, pharmacy Hang specialists on, guys. prepare customized medications to meet your specific needs. Their approach combines the. It's just me. Don't panic. <laughs> so, Dr. Yeah. Dave, we have a few questions for the online people here. Cool. Um, da, 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 if you can, is it safe to have dental work despite COVID? Owned, sure. The person that's at greatest risk for getting COVID is the dentist, believe it or not. So if your dentist is in the office doing dental work, God bless them because they're really putting themselves in harm's way. Every time they go in there, they're exposing themselves far more than they're than you're expo you know being exposed to them. So the answer is yeah, and whatever you do, tip the hygienist. <laughs> yeah, because they're the ones that really take the heat on this one. 
So no, the, the COVID is not a problem for, for dental work unless you're the dentist and the hygienist. And I've got a, a number of patients that are, and so there's some things that I do for them to pr- give them a little extra protection. Uh-huh. What's the next question? The next question is, hold on. Sound I like FLA will not well tune in for the hour just to listen to your show. What's wrong with their <laughs> Providencia? They're nice to us. Well, hey. actually, they're nicer than the, the last station was to me. I got to tell you. <laughs> well, you've got two days' notice to, to let you know that we're cutting eighty percent of your listenership out. And oh, by the way, we're not changing your bill. So. Oh, how about that? Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, that's why. That's why there was a, there was a diuresis in medicine. We would call it a diuresis. That's where you pee things out. So the experts on the weekend peed their way from the other station to FLA. So maybe there'll be an increase in, in quality here. I hope so. I hope so. We're working it. So, but uh, thank you for thank you for tuning in. Okay, because definitely. Uh, uh, let's see. Yippee! You're here. You Yippee. disappeared from the other station. No kidding! I disappeared. I I, I ran. Oh, there was a puff of smoke and a hearty high O silver, and I was gone. Yeah, I actually saw that. The puff of smoke. Puff of smoke. High-ho. Yeah. Very I mean, interesting. Yeah. After ten years doing that, there was you know they 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 drummed me out. You know it was the the old rip off the epaulets and take the sword and break it in half. And if you've ever tried to break a sword in half, that that'll cut your fingers off. Hmm. You know they they do it on TV, but it, I don't think you really can do it. No? No, not without losing your fingers. All right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. I'm going to try something interesting here. We still have a couple of minutes. So, cool. if you guys are online and you have any questions for Dr. David Klein, please ask. I know they always want to know about the uh, the quick... Um, the, the COVID testing hotline and the qu- and the FAST tests? Sure. Okay, well, the, okay. The, the deal with FAST, okay? Not everything is as fast as you want it. Okay, and sometimes for very, very good reason. But the COVID hotline Mm -hmm. is 407-636-3945. And that rings through to to our sales guy. His name is Robert. Okay, and principally what he does is he handles uh, emergencies. He handles uh, things like nursing homes and whatnot. And for bringing people in 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 singlets, basically, he'll go ahead and set that up. So we have an office in Jacksonville and one in St. Augustine. So if if you need something done like immediately of a PCR nature, okay, that's where you really want to go because it chops 10 to 12, 14 hours off the turnaround time. Because if you get out there by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it'll be on that evening's run and it gets it gets um, reported by 3 o'clock in the morning with a caveat. If it looks positive, okay, or if there's if it, if it speckles, let's say, okay, it possibly, is, it, then it goes again. We run it a second time. Okay, seconds. why do we want to do that? Because nobody is going to come out with a false positive under my watch. So if it has to be run a second time, it takes an extra day. So, you know, for the most part, if you hear about it early, it's a good thing. If there's a delay, it might not be so great. But that's 407-636-3945. Ask for Robert. And then t- and if you call him in the middle of the night, don't tell him I told you to call. Okay. <laughs> All right, hang on a second here. But also, if you need, if you need uh, finger sticks and the other stuff, we do them in, in, in long Da, 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 da. We're back, guys. How are you? Welcome back to the show, which we call Stages of Life Radio with Dr. David Klein. Love to have you along with us today. So uh, you want to check in? 407-422-1212. We've got, um, we got a buddy on the line already. You know that, right? So we should probably cool. we should probably <laughs> try and take that. Let's see if he's still there. Oh. Mark from Lakeland, 67 years old, complaining of eczema. Excellent. Nothing more excellent than eczema. So, Mark, what's up? Well, good afternoon. Let me first congratulate you on your new radio station. They have better coverage with this one. <laughs> what a shock! You know, so you know, yeah, but you're you're exactly right. You know, I was I was I guess I was spoiled with it before until they decided to chop its legs off. They had the 500 pound gorilla in the state. They had the they had the, the best uh, coverage of any station in the entire state, and they blew it. But that's what happens when you sell it out. You sell it to somebody else, and they think they can do better, and some pencil jock with a with a with a, an MBA from from uh, Chicago <laughs> happens every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So what, happens every time. Okay. So what do we got? Back to eczema. Two two quick questions. Sure. First off, since I retired and went on Medicare, yep. my Medicare and my new insurance has required me to change doctors and change <laughs> treatments. Yes. Uh, I was originally on Ucrisa. Now I'm on Trimsinolone. Yeah, what you did now is you, you yeah, you got yourself a Medicare disadvantage plan. Okay, so you went ahead. Of yeah, you, you went ahead and, and you believed the person on television, Joe Namath or whomever it happens to be, 
who, by the way, isn't doing it for free, right? Okay, so these guys get up there, they get paid a lot of commission to sell you something that they take a third of the value right off the table. Eucrisa is a marvelous <laughs> topical anti-inflammatory. Great stuff. But, you know, something triumphant. That I cannot get with Medicare. No, you can get it. You just can't get it with the one you have. So what you need, uh, well, now here's what you need to do. Okay. Okay, because yeah. triamcinolone isn't going to cut it, okay? Triamcinolone, right. you, can get, you can get a kilogram of triamcinolone or pound, a, one pound jar, 454 grams of this stuff for about $4, okay? That's the wholesale right. price, okay? It is some serious cheap. It's cheaper than face cream. All right. So what do they do? Right. Well, we'll get you the cheap stuff because the other stuff is a few hundred bucks. And after all, you are not worth it. So how do you do this? Well, we'll talk about what you can do in the meantime. But the first thing you need to do, OK, is to go ahead and go on my Medicare.gov and pick okay. a Medicare Part D plan. OK, that's the or whatever, whatever they call the pharmacy plan these days and find one that covers you, Chrisa. And then when you do, OK, then you go ahead and. And sign up for it, and it will, it will automatically disenroll you from the Medicare Advantage plan. That is how you get out of Medicare Advantage plans. They'll tell you you have to wait a year. <laughs> well, guess what? I just told 200,000 people how they can get out from underneath Medicare Advantage plans and do it with a single telephone call. How do you keep from getting wrapped back into it, you might ask? When you sign up for your yeah. pharmacy plan, sign up for the pharmacy plan, and then get a supplemental by a different insurance company. I don't care who it is. It doesn't right. matter who it is. It makes little or no difference. But as long as they're different, they can't roll you into a Medicare uh, Advantage plan. So what I did for myself is I have Aetna, or United Healthcare, I believe, for my pharmacy. And then I've got uh, Mutual of Omaha for my supplemental. I have them both take money right out of my checking account, and I'm happy. Uh -huh. I'm very, very pleased. All right, now getting back to your, your eczema. Okay, so they, they took away the stuff that took care of the problem, which is a marvelous non-steroidal topical anti-inflammatory it's a leukotriene uh actor it's very very cool the way that stuff works so what i'm going to suggest that you do in the meantime until you're able to unwind from the medicare disadvantage plans which is what i think they should be right. called is you want to start yourself uh, no wh where is the eczema on your body where where, where do you, where's it uh and when, when it got bad it manifested itself on my hands torso and feet okay now it's dialed back down just to my hands okay piece of cake there are a couple things you need to make sure of because you can end up with fungal infections that can mimic eczema okay and if that happens you have to treat it very very differently and so i've got i mean be half a dozen patients who you would swear had eczema on their hands Okay, but I ended up having to start them on topical antifungals, and that squared it away. So the very first thing that I'm going to have you do is answer the following question. What did you do for a living before you retired? I retired from the post office about a year and a half ago. Okay, so did you find yourself wearing gloves a lot? Oh, yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. But, but that, that was the paper I was working with, handling a billion uh, letters a day with drugs. Oh, I, the oil right out of your skin. It was. I'm not so worried about the oil. I'm more worried about the perspiration. So when you're finding yourself wearing gloves, especially work gloves that may have been worn by somebody else, it's very, very common to pick up uh, fungal infections that way. So you see it with firemen. You see it with um, uh, garbage people. You see it with folks that work at yard work. So I've got uh, one, one uh, guy right now that I had to treat for a year for something called Sporothrix shankii, which is a type of... Uh, um, it's a type of fungus that hits the, hits the hands and arms, okay? And so he had this thing for years, okay? And so I put him on one pill a day of an antifungal, and it went away. So what I'm going to suggest that we do with you first is to use topical uh, castor oil, which is an anti-inflammatory, an antibacterial, and an antifungal. The second thing is get grape, okay. grapefruit seed extract, okay? And yeah. what you do with it is you take one capsule twice a day. This is the, 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 the oral stuff. And then the second right. thing is grapefruit seed extract liquid. And you cut it 50-50 right. and you wipe that into your hands. And you want to do this for about six weeks. After that, trade uh -huh. out the GSE, the grapefruit seed extract, for tea tree oil with shampoo. And you wash your hands sudsy with, with the tea tree oil. It's another antifungal. That should start knocking it down. 
If the redness starts to go away, it's really going to suggest that it's it's a fungus, uh, a fungus rather than eczema. There's a fungus among us. I will yes. tell you what, Doc. We need to take a quick break here. Yes, Thank ma'am. you so much for the call. His line is now available at 407-422-1212. We've got some questions on the text line as well. 23680 if you want to get on board with us. It is Stages of Life Radio with Dr. David Klein. FLA News Center. 107 right. more deaths reported in Florida from the coronavirus Sunday, yes, the day that typically has the lowest numbers of the week, more than 9,400 have died. That's me. Don't panic. Are you ripping on Medicare again, Doc? I'm <coughs> sorry, baby. I see you ripping on Medicare. Oh, I'm always ripping on Medicare. Not Medicare. I'm ripping Medicare Advantage. Medicare is marvelous. The only statewide office holder, one of its rising but why would stars. So why would somebody Real take the Uber finest insurance that you can possibly get? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only one that might be better is federal blue, mm, federal blue Cross, because those ass, you know, those gentlemen and gentle, gentle women, they they will in fact steal from you in terms of just they'll, they'll take from you anything they can. <laughs> Medicare for the rest of us though. So what are they going to do? Medicare for all, which means Medicare for none. For none. Yeah, it's just marvelous. All right, let's see what we got here. Why should you have a good one if I can't get one? Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's, that's just the way things that's work. The math. Why? Because I've only been working for 58 years to get it. Oh you you want to work a little harder, you knock yourself out. <laughs> so guess what? Oh, yeah, well, it's, it doesn't matter. You, you had an opportunity to work harder <laughs> and longer. <you> know? <laughs> They're mean. People crack me up. All right, let's see what we got. Where was we? Um, yeah, we got a couple of... Uh, Questions here on the text line will address, and I'm. What did I do? Here we go. Another call. That's good. Gotta love it. I know. <laughs> high tech. That's what we're looking at here. This oh, is high tech. tech. Whoa. Let's see. My husband's on the whole thirty diet. The which, whole thirty. Which uh, doesn't give you a lot of fats. It's making him constipated. Yeah, okay, here's the, oh what a what a shock. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, here's 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 the way these things work. Your colon, okay, that's the large bowel to, 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 to those of you that are non medical. But colon has one function, what? one alone, and that is to take water out of your poop. Fecal material if you're a medical type, right? Mm. So it takes the water out of your poop. So guess what? Okay, if you get dehydrated, the poop starts to get a little bit hard, gets a little thick. But if you take oil in your diet, not fat, but oil, Mm -hmm. it'll pass through into the colon and doesn't get absorbed. It loosens things up. So when you take oil out of your diet, it's a natural thing that you're going to get constipated. It happens every time. Same thing with opiates. Opiates do the same thing. It slows GI motility. Every person that's on opiates is going to become constipated. So the first thing we do for folks isn't to sell them an $800 a month pill, which, by the way, a lot of people do because they just feel like wasting $9,000 a year. What you do is you take flaxseed oil and something called CLA. These are two oils that the body has a hard time absorbing. They start in your teeth, end up in your tail, and it prevents the constipation. So the first thing you're going to ask your husband to do is to start on two grams of flaxseed oil at bedtime and 2,500 milligrams of CLA twice a day. It's going to take three or four days before it goes from teeth to tail, and he's going to start getting better and better at going to the bathroom. And then after a period of time, he's going to start feeling pretty good. The temptation is to come off of it, and the answer is no, you stay on this as long as you're taking one of these goofy diets. Oh, in 30 seconds, we're going to be back on the radio. Okay. Thank you all for listening and watching us on Facebook as well as on Periscope Sometimes and on this YouTube. Talk. <laughs> 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 so what we're doing here today is uh, we're simulcasting. We're broadcasting uh, on the radio as well as on the iHeartRadio app. You can find us every Sunday from 4 until 5, and it's just about time to come back. So here we go. You know, I like the way this is set up. I like the way this is set up, too. This is good. That's Dr. David Klein. You are listening to Stages of Life Radio every Sunday afternoon from 4 until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can also catch the replays on podcasts, iHeartRadio app podcast, or wherever you get your favorite podcast. If you hear anything referenced that you're interested in, nutraceutical-wise or other, just go to stagesoflifevitamins.com. And now, Dr. David Klein. He's in the house. The doctor is in. 
So we're taking calls right now, and what I'm going to discuss now, okay, mm-hmm. you know, just because I have a moment to do it, and I have a just an urge to do this, mm-hmm. is a little bit of philosophy, okay, because the medicine part it actually comes very easily. It's not that difficult. Philosophy is more interesting to me. So what is the philosophy of medicine? Okay, what is it all about? Why do we care? You know, people talk about allopathic medicine, which is, you know, Dr. Welby. You know, you go down there, you have a sore throat, they give you a pill, you go away. You know, you stay away until you get sick again, but nobody really pays attention to making you better, to make your performance improve, or to keep you out of trouble. What about homeopathic medicine? Okay, people think that that's the opposite of allopathic, and the answer is no. Homeopathic medicine is very, very different. That's where you give somebody a tiny bit of something, and magically the body makes more of it. Okay, if that makes sense to you, then you're going to have to explain it to me. So if you think you're deficient in zinc, we give you just a little bit of zinc, and your body manufactures an element, which of course it can't do. So allopathic medicine and homeopathic medicine are not opposites. They're just different philosophies. There are homeopathic medicines that are useful. Okay, um, Arnica Montana being a very, very useful homeopathic medicine for knocking bruises out. Okay, it's marvelous stuff. But when you're looking at things like diuretics, things for your heart, things for immune system, maybe not. You, they're expensive, but they give you very, very little. Then you have different types of viewpoints. So let's say you've got a foot problem. You go to the podiatrist. They will look at things at, in a podiatric point of view. The same foot problem. You go ahead and go to an orthopedic surgeon. You're going to see it from an orthopedic standpoint. And the joke is the problem doesn't change, but the viewpoint and the treatments might. So you have to make a decision. Who do you go to see? You might have a knee problem. You can go see a physical medicine rehab doc, orthopedic surgeon. You might want to go to a GP or a veterinarian if you have a good one, all right, to try to figure out what's wrong. The philosophy is just that. People looking at small areas with a small or narrow background. What, you're, what you really want is somebody who can look at things several different ways in order to figure out what's going on. So the rule of thumb in pediatrics is if if a kid comes in with knee pain, you look at the hip. All right, why? Because knee pain is often a referred pain from a hip. You know something? The same thing is true with the elderly, except geriatric folks don't necessarily watch this. The orthopedic surgeons may or may not. So the body doesn't change in spite of your age. Neurologically, it may change a little bit. Pharmacologically, it may change a lot, but it doesn't change that much. At stages of life, what we do is we look at things as if they were performance-mediated, performance medicine. So it's a matter of life's trajectories. Now, what am I talking about? What's that all about? I want you to imagine way back when you were in, 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 in junior high school and they showed you a bow and arrow, okay? You're supposed to go out in the field and you're supposed to do a bow and arrow. Girls do this, guys sometimes. Well, any, that, what a foolish thing for a junior high school to do is to give a, give a kid a bow and arrow. You know, that, when you think about it, that is like, a, that's like giving, giving your grandkids a drum set. I mean, honest to God, you know, what are we, we going to do? Oh, next year you're going to trampoline. Oh, okay. These are, these are really bad ideas, but we used to do this. But what you learned with a bow and arrow is that if you really want to shoot that arrow, arrow far, let's say you want to hit your neighbor's house with it, what you, what you do is you elevate to 45 degrees, okay, because that'll give you your longest throw, your longest, uh, it, it, it will give you the longest range that you can. Artillery folks have this thing figured out. It goes back to the Greeks when they de- you know, really developed trigonometry. It was how do you bomb your neighbor? That's what trigonometry is all about. You know, what, what's, what's, it all, what's mathematics all about? How can we kill people more effectively? All right, in medicine, you try to help people. So life's trajectory, how can we get the best longevity? That's your, that is your uh, range. That is what you're looking to get done. So how do you adjust your windage? How do you adjust your elevation if you're, if you're a shooter? If you're a, 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 uh, I was a target shooter. I was a competitive uh, a pistol and rifle guy. And so how do you get these things dialed in? And that's what we do. We look at those sorts of influences that are likely to shorten your tenure. Okay? Now, you might find this one hard to believe. Okay? But a normal blood sugar is 75 to 85 uh, milligram percent. Okay? 75 to 85. But normal's up to 99, and my doctor won't treat me unless it's 120. Your life expectancy decreases with uh, every milligram percent over 85. Your life expectancy decreases. Think about that for a second. So you might want to tighten up your blood sugar because you aren't going to live that long or live long enough if you do. 
Then comes the, gee, I don't want to live forever. You won't anyway, so you don't have no to worries. want that. No worries. You're not going to. <laughs> but do you want to keep both of your legs, all of your toes? That's always a concern. Do you want to make sure that, that your uh, intimacy maintains? You know, These are the sorts of things that you really don't want to live longer than that. You know, My dad was 92 when he passed away. And when he was 90, I asked him, I said, hey, dad, you know, you know, would you like me to get you some Viagra? He lived in one of these retirement communities. My dad was 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 my dad was my hero. So I thought, hey, what can a what can a son who's a doctor do for his dad? Okay, that 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 you can't do otherwise. So I asked, hey, want me to get you some Viagra? He looked at me. He said, he said, Dave, that's for old people. Oh boy. The son of a gun had it dialed in. He'd been my patient for 30 years. Okay, and he did really, really well. So what do we do? We look to optimize. Insulin level is something that most of the listeners on this show right now have never heard of. On the previous uh, uh, radio station, they'd heard this a lot. Insulin levels are extraordinarily important. If your insulin level is over 15 for any length of time, your chances of cancer increase. Heart disease go up. It's fascinating. When was the last time you had your insulin level checked? Probably well, never. Well, probably never. My A1C is this. My A1C is that. My blood sugar is this. Your insulin level is what tells you what your longevity is going to do. And we're going to come back after a break because I think we have to. You're right. But we're going to keep on the same idea, but not Viagra. We've got a couple of gentlemen who have <laughs> questions, seriously, who have questions about stud mix and cool. uh, health problems. Well, you so, too can be more like Dr. Dave. Indeed. And on that note, we're going to take a break at Stages <laughs> of Life Radio with Dr. David Klein on News Radio WFLA, Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> Way too much fun. That, that one was for the that that one was for the uppity opposite FLA. They're gonna go. Oh no! Did he just mm-hmm. say that? <laughs> right. It's Sunday. We can yes, say what we want. Um, yeah, we can say what we want until we can't. So <laughs> until they tell us differently. You know, for our, for our nighttime show, the rules change. You know, we we do we do a show every every other Thursday. Uh, what's, what are the hours on that? It's seven to uh, eight o'clock. Seven to eight o'clock. Okay, and yes. it's a, it's it's a, it's connections radio. It's 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 with a twist, as it were, and we're allowed to do and say things that we don't we're not permitted to when kids are around. Not, not how many kids out there right now are up after seven or eight at night? Mm-hmm. I'd say all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, yeah. So you know, maybe we'll teach them a thing or two. So what do we got on there? All right. We got two minutes over there. So, you mentioned last week about sores in the nose and what I can do for it. I've had them for a couple of months now. The rheumatologist gave me steroids for it, oh, but I don't want to take it. Good move. I can't go to your office till mid September. All right. Uh, you may just have to wait until mid September. What I'm going to suggest that you do in the meantime, okay, is to put either, you know, there are these uh, herpes uh, type lotions that you can get at the, at the at the pharmacy and try that out and see how the thing works for you but generally speaking a little bit of vaseline is all you need to do all right what does it do it's an anti-inflammatory it acts, acts as a bandage it keeps it from drying out castor oil works also but just a little bit of vaseline ought to do the job gold bond makes a product in a little, tiny little tube which is 30 percent vaseline and so um you know, you know, I'm, my wife is saying it's called a cold sore ointment. Okay, yeah, well, that's really what they are. Okay, but you know, Gold Bond works just fine. I don't know. I put some Carmex up there. Carmex? Yeah. I thought the other ones that no. sold. Oh. No, no, Carmex. Oh, Carmex. Carmex. I gotcha. Okay. Well, Camphor. I, well, I use. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> but I use the same stuff on my fingers. Okay, so if uh, if for whatever reason your fingers uh, hands dry out, you know, if you wash your hands a lot, like yeah. we all are. So you get these little cracks next to your nails. So the Gold Bond makes a very, very good product for this. It's a tiny little tube, costs a few dollars, and you put just the smallest uh, drop on there, and it knocks it out in a couple days. It'll do the same thing for the sore in the nose, actually. Um, but, but to take a steroid for that is insane. No, that's really ridiculous. You know, one of the things that these steroids will do for you, okay, they will keep guys like me very busy. When you take oral steroids unnecessarily, it shoots down. Your, uh, a hormone called ACTH, which stands for adrenocorticotropin hormone. And you're going to go, nah, who cares? You care. The fact that you don't know about it doesn't make it any more or less important. So what will happen? Yes, yeah, quickly. Because cortisol levels drop, your immune system takes a hammering, and so does your testosterone. Yeah. Because that is one of the sequelae of this. So guess what? Things stop working. Things started working just now, though, really. Mm. <laughs> 
Love it. Let's be honest. Love Welcome it. back to Stages of Life Radio. I am Melissa Fox, along with Dr. David Klein from Stages of Life Medical Institute. Throw a dot com behind that. Stages of Life Medical Institute dot com. That's like a landing page for the world at your fingertips. Honestly, you can follow us on social media as well from there. And you can find all kinds of diagnoses uh, and explanations there for symptoms, medicines, you name it, right? Differentiation through education. Education. So what do we do? Okay, I've spent hundreds of thousands of hard-earned dollars to put these websites together and give you information. So go so there. Go there. Take advantage of it. I mean, if you think that research is doing a Google search, you are dead wrong. Read what I have to write and then go to the National Library of Medicine PubMed and verify it. Okay, then you're actually getting close to doing a little bit of research. I think Joe is on the line, and I Joe. think he may have already texted us, too. Um, it is Joe from Longwood. Hi, Joe. <coughs> How Hello. are you? Hey, Joe. <laughs> hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe's got a problem with some stud mix. What's okay. going on? What's the question, Joe? Oh, my question is this. Not a problem. I take, I started taking it about three, three weeks ago, All but right. I also take three medications for my high blood pressure. All right. And I was wondering if it mixes. Uh, one is Clonidine 0.3 milligrams. How often? Uh, Hydrochloric. How often uh, are you taking the, the yeah. clonidine? Yeah. The clonidine twice a day. All right. The hydrochlorothiazide and you can even get the other one. Low sartin. Uh, low sartin. Yeah. Low sartin once. Okay. And I take a potassium. No problem. Yeah. Okay. The the, the stud mix isn't going to interfere with it at all. There are two things in that stud mix that may actually lower your blood pressure: L-arginine and ornithine. These are two amino acids that are vasodilators. So if the, if anything, it'll bring your blood pressure down. So the only thing that's going to go down by taking stud mix is going to be your blood pressure. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, hello. Now, oh, my, wife, our, 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 my wife was worried. Yeah, your I really wife. respect your opinion. I want to tell you that right off the bat. I appreciate it. And yeah, so the deal with stud mix, okay, it's very interesting stuff. You take three capsules at bedtime, and I hope you're doing it right. Three at bedtime, and it lowers, yeah, it lowers, es- yeah, good, it lowers estrogen levels. Okay, and it does this through inhibition of two enzymes, one called aromatase, the other one's called 5-alpha reductase. Not important for you to know the names of the enzymes. It's important for you to know that it actually hits something sp- and very, very specific. It's a vasodilator, so that way you wake up a whole lot easier for your wife to enjoy if you get my oh, drift. So yes. the bedtime is important because your body secretes yes. estrogen between 3 and 6 in the morning. Actually, it secretes testosterone, and the estrogen is the, is the oh. degradation product. So the timing sure. is key, absolutely key. Gotcha. All righty. And so what else do we usually take uh, when you're doing stud mix? You give that about two to three months to see how it's going to hit. And then if you need an extra kick, mm-hmm. you do one of two things, either uh, a product called Nomo Whining, I get to name it, okay? Okay. And it's D-indole methane, and it further lowers the estrogen. And the second one is called tribulus extract. And what that does is it kicks up testosterone. And so, you know, the idea here basically is to use a natural, this is natural as bee poop, okay? It's a, it's a natural approach to restoring testosterone to estrogen balance. And you can, in fact, do this without having to resort to pharmaceuticals. Been doing it for years, this was one of the things I gave my dad, my 90-year-old dad. So his friends thought it was amusing he was taking stud mix. Yeah, my dad had a hobby that they did not have, if you get my drift. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's well yeah. worth doing. My dad, my dad was my hero. Uh, Kathy's texted in. She said, I want, uh, a friend told me to stop protonics because her magnesium levels are, I told my friend, I should say, yes. to stop protonics because her magnesium levels kept going too low. Yes. I've heard you say not to take acid reflux meds or PPI. Why and how to treat, please? Excellent. Okay, there are a couple reasons right now why you want to, you want to get off those things. Stomach acid is there for a reason. It was not a bit of misengineering, okay? Your stomach acid acts as a moat, okay? It protects you from the outside you know, the, the attackers, as it were. So impurities in your food, things like bacteria, viruses, parasites, they hit the stomach acid, and it kills most of them. Okay, when you take away the stomach acid, it makes it far more likely that you're going to end up with food boi- foodborne illnesses and, and other sorts of uh, bad things, parasites and whatnot. So the, the acid is important. Now, when you take it away, you got an issue. Protonics is particularly a, a problematic because it will deplete the body of vitamin B12 and magnesium. So B12 deficiency, magnesium deficiency are very, very hard to treat 
in the presence of things like protonics, Tagamet, Zantac, and whatnot. So you want to come off it. So the question then becomes, how do you deal with reflux esophagitis, GERD, G-E-R-D, uh, heartburn if you're old school like me, and you take something called sucralfate, S-U-C-R-A-L-F-A-T-E. Sucralfate is a prescription. It's inexpensive. It used to be a branded medicine called carafate. So when I was a young doc, okay, I was taught this stuff by a GP because I was coming and I said, oh, we need to people, put people on Tagamet, Zantac, da, da, da. And he says, no, 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 use sucralfate. Sucralfate is a topically acting medication and it doesn't deplete the body of B12 magnesium and doesn't screw up certain proteolytic enzymes like pepsin, trypsin, and chymotrypsin. So you can actually have malabsorption syndromes by using these PPIs. And if you want to have some fun and do some real research, go to the National Library of Medicine and look at kidney failure and proton pump inhibitors. That's fun. That's a fun oh, day for you. Well, no, it is when people come in and, and they're, they're uh, EGFR. That's, that's a measurement we use for, for kidney function. And I check it every time I draw blood on people. It drops when you take these medicines. The trick is is not to cause kidney failure. So you did a good thing by recommending that you come off of it. The second half of it is to use sucralfate, which is a prescription med, and it's cheap. I've got time to squeeze in a quick call. Cool. All what right, you got? it's Kathy from Orlando, and she wants to know about babies and vaccinations. Hi, Kathy. Kathy? Yes. Hey, Kathy, girl, how are you doing? Oh, fine. <laughs> yes, I, I'm just wondering um, what your opinion is on vaccinations for infants. My daughter had a baby four months ago, and she's asking my advice, and I, I can't give it to her because um, I, I'm, I'm not up to date with that kind of information. Okay. Can you give me your thoughts? I'll be happy to do it. Okay, first thing about vaccinations is, is the vaccinations have saved hundreds of millions of lives since they were first uh, introduced by Jenner back in the 18th century. Okay, so in general, the vaccination pro programs are very, very beneficial. When I was a kid, we had this thing called polio, okay? And every month or two, there'd be, some, there'd be an empty desk, okay? You know, you'd have a classroom of 25 or 30 kids, and there'd be an empty desk, all right? Empty desk meant somebody got knocked out with polio. Have her follow the pediatrician's advice and do it. The piece of advice I'm going to give you, though, okay, is that you need to go out and get a DTaP. That's a pertussis vaccine, so that way you don't give the kid uh, these illnesses. Second thing is you need to go out and get a mumps vaccine so you don't make your, your grandchild sick. You need to go out and get a shingles vaccine so you don't make your kid sick. There so you go. It doesn't end with a kid. Okay. You got to keep following you up. You have on to it. follow this. That's as, right. as I do, I've got three grandchildren in the past two years, and I'll tell you what I feel like a pincushion. You've been listening to Stages of Life Radio with Dr. David Klein on News Radio WFLA Orlando. We'll see you next week. Summer of Savings event. You made it. Had and another. Fast. Yes, there was an, many. An, another one in the can. Prova, Provendin, Provendincia says that she tells her <laughs> patients to stay in regular Medicare and avoid all those managed Medicare plans. That's right. No, there, okay, there's nothing good about these Medicare, uh, these golden handcuff plans. Traditional red, white, and blue carrier card Medicare. That's what you're looking for. If you need something more, you get the pharmacy plan. Very, very important. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching us on Facebook and everywhere else. And we love you. <laughs>